Hey, what's going on people? Nightface here and welcome to a special edition of my Blu-ray collection here. And this one in particular is my comic book collection. This ranges from, you know, um, comic book film adaptations of course and non comic book uh, related films um, that doesn't necessarily need to be adapted from a comic book you know it could just stand on its own and still qualify in that genre as a comic book film but anyway yeah I have a massive collection as you can tell I'm a big comic book fan uh, ranging from DC Marvel you know you name it so uh, yeah let's get started we're gonna start um, here this is the Marvel Cinematic Universe we'll start here and we got Captain America Civil War. I absolutely love this uh, steelbook. I had to get the steelbook. Um, I remember first seeing it, Civil War, and I was just blown away, you know, with that beautiful shot in the back, the epic shot of Captain America and Iron Man. America! <laughs> and you open it up, and of course, you got that iconic inside artwork that's just so beautiful um, you get the blu-ray 3d here let's just take those out real quick let me show you the whole thing um, yeah this, this is one of my favorite steel books um, I really want to get back into collecting steel books because of artwork like this is just beautiful absolutely love it absolutely love this movie it's probably my second or third favorite um, MCU film, but uh, yeah, just a nice matte finish, cap shield, and Iron Man, awesome, let's keep it going, alright, and of course we got Ant-Man, I just recently picked this up, just a nice, that Blu-ray 3D slipcover, I was fairly surprised when I first saw Ant-Man in theaters, Paul Rudd was great, um, yeah, I can't wait for Ant-Man on the Wasp, so yeah, I got Ant-Man, now we're getting into Avengers territory with the Avengers. Um, this superhero mashup was amazing. It's so, an icon iconic dream come true when this came out. It just blew everyone's mind. I mean, this is up there with you know with the Dark Knight as one of the best comic book films ever made, and uh, it's just epic seeing Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, Hulk all together. You know, it's just. It's just so awesome. I wish I had a slip code for this. Uh, soon I'll get one, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, Avengers. Alright, we got Avengers, Age of Ultron. I already know a lot of people don't like this one. It's it's good. It's not the best. It's good. I just wish Ultron was more menacing. I wish there was more you know, at stake in this film. But in the end, like most MCU films, it all wraps up rather nicely in the end and you know it could have gone for a more darker turn in my opinion but hey um still decent um definitely one of the weaker mcu films and uh yeah uh, vision here is op as hell <laughs> overpowered but anyway moving on now we're getting cat america here cat america the first avenger the first avenger right there yeah, I really like the slipcover here. Um, again, nice origin story, but uh, what they did with uh, Red Skull, or I think that's his name, right? Yeah, Hugo Weaving played a villain here, and ah, just a missed opportunity. He could have been a good villain, you know. Um, anyway, I still like it. Not my favorite, but still pretty good origin story for Captain America. Alright, moving on, we got Captain America the Winter Soldier with Samuel Jackson in the forefront. <laughs> that cool Sam Jackson slip cover. I like the back. Pretty nice. You got a shot at the group there. Sweet. Uh, Winter Soldier, probably my number one. This is probably my number one. Because when I first saw it, I'll never forget it. I uh, saw the Cinemark Theater. XD and it just blew my mind. The action sequences, the fight between uh, Warner Soldier and Captain America, uh, just so good, so damn good. 
There's no inside out work. <laughs> Obviously, but yeah, it's just my number one. Just the way to combine action and espionage is surprisingly in a Marvel movie. Just yeah, so happy to have that with that slip cover. It's cool. And now we got Guardians of the Galaxy. This is probably my third favorite uh, Marvel movie. Um, shit, man. When this movie came out, I admit I wasn't thrilled or joy looking forward to it because I knew nothing of the Guardians of the Galaxy and I thought it would just look meh, you know, it was just something they were just going to put out to make money and surprisingly, <laughs> it's my top three. I love it. I love all the characters. Rocket, Groot, Gamora, Drax, Star-Lord, you name it, man. Just, and I love that exclusive slip cover. You know, Rocket looking bad. So yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy and of course, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And I still enjoy this one, still rewatchable. Not as good as the first, but you know, it's still fun fun movie to watch. You know, you can have a good time watching it. Alright, now get into Iron Man territory with the one to star of all. That's right, Iron Man, the very first MCU film. With that great uh, Ultimate 2 Disc Edition slip cover. Um yeah man this movie came out you know just just floored me I mean it came out the same year the Dark Knight came out of course I, I love the Dark Knight way more but still I mean Robert Downey Jr's performance he is the Iron Man he will always be the definitive Iron Man and just great film great film definitely my favorite Iron Man film and then we get into Things like Iron Man 2, where the only saving grace was Scarlett Johansson kicking ass in those in those tights, you know. So <laughs> that's the only redeeming quality of this film. The villain was weak, you know. You had Whiplash from Mickey Rourke, and they changed um, Iron Man's buddy. It was played by Don Cheadle. It was just meh, you know. But gotta have it. And in my opinion, this is the worst MCU film. And, I own it because it was cheap. Fuck it. Iron Man 3. <laughs> you know, I had to complete it. And, um, yeah. I used to hate this film, like, with a passion. Like, I used to hate it on the same level as Amazing Spider-Man 2. But, you know, it kind of grew on me. It's alright. It's, it's average at best. It's just, they just ruined it, killed it, by making um, the Mandarin some drunk actor from Miami. It was just, oh my god, it's cringe inducing. It just I hated it. <laughs> just I'm sure everyone hated Iron Man three. You know, but that was the main reason. It's just the villain was literally a joke. So yeah. And then you got the incredible hook with that awesome lenticular. The green exclusive slip cover that everybody wants for this film. Um yeah, uh, you know, Edward Norton, oh, I can't even talk, Edward Norton did a pretty good job, but I like Mark Ruffalo's portrayal way better, you know, still kind of bummed out that they didn't keep the same actor, I hate it when they do that, but, um, yeah, it comes with the green case, pretty cool, so, yeah, incredible hope. And of course, this is the one that everyone hates. The everyone rags and says the worst mode of the movie. And that's Thor, The Dark World. Funny enough, call me crazy, I prefer this over Iron Man 3 and over the original Thor. I know it sounds crazy. But the thing is, what I like most about this, it was very fast-paced. The action moved rather quickly. Yes, the villain was weak, whatever. and um, But I like Thor and... Um, Loki's dynamic. I really like their story arc here. It was very powerful. So, yeah, that's my defense on Thor: <laughs> The Dark World. You know, but, um, yeah. I mean, I have to have a Thor movie in there at least. Anyway, moving on. Now we're gonna get into. Let's get into this section right here. These, this is just a mix of um, different comic book adaptations. It's not DC or Marvel. Just a mix. So anyway, let's go with Thread. And I heard they're making this into a TV show, and I pray to God that it comes true and that Carl Urban, the actor who portrayed Dredd, comes back because he knocked it out of the park. 
Man, I saw this movie. 3D was the best 3D I've seen in my life. And I hate 3D. Yeah, so... Show you the disc. I don't know why I'm opening this up. But anyway, my bread. Just badass. Just full adrenaline. Balls to the wall. Bananas. Just badass. And, um, yeah. Okay, now we got... Chronicle, this is in no way ad adapted from any comic book or anything, but just the premise, you know, about these three kids who de develop superhuman powers. And, uh, yeah, just I really like this one as a found footage. It just blows my mind that this um, underrated film, this cult classic, was made by the same director who made uh, Fan Four Stick or that terrible Fantastic Four movie. Yeah, <laughs> but still, this one holds up. Uh, Michael B. Jordan was in this one, and this is amazing. I really like this one. Next up, we got The Losers, and to my understanding, this is um, actually adapted from a comic book, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yeah, no one talks about this movie at all, like it never happened. And the crazy thing is you have an insane cast. Look at this cast. You got um, Zoe Saldana, aka Gamora, Idris Elba, you know, and um, you got Chris Evans here, and you got freaking Negan from The Walking Dead. It's crazy. Look. The gang's all here, guys. It's crazy. Stellar cast. If you guys have not seen The Losers, I highly recommend it. It's a sleeper hit. A lot of people have forgotten about this movie. It's pretty good. Anyway, moving on, we got Unbreakable and Night nice Shyamalan's masterpiece, in my opinion, next to The Sixth Sense, and guys, we're getting Glass, the film, <laughs> which is so exciting, because I loved Unbreakable when it first came out, just, just blew my mind, this is the most realistic take and portrayal of what would happen if you develop uh, superhuman power in the real world, this is it guys, watch this film if you haven't. It's a, it's a classic. Sam Jackson and Bruce Willis give one of the best performances in their career. Seriously, guys. Unbreakable. It's a masterpiece. All right. Moving on. We got 300. Steelbook. Pretty epic, badass steelbook. You already know this is Sparta. Sorry. This is Sparta. Sorry. I forgot you have to like kind of scream. <laughs> I don't want to wake people up. Anyway, 300, um, classic. Probably Zack Snyder's best film to date. Next to Watchmen, but that could be an argument. Anyway. Then we got Sin City, A Dame to Kill for. A lot of people didn't really like this and just been forgotten about, but I actually enjoyed the sequel. I think it was a worthy sequel and it was pretty damn good. I enjoyed, you know, um, Make Your Work coming back as Marv. Definitely a plus. We got um, Rosario Dawson here, just Joseph Gordon Levitt. Um, yeah, I, I like Joseph Gordon Levitt's uh, story the most. Um, just an amazing steel book. I love this steel book. This steel book is just gorgeous. You got the beautiful Evergreen here playing that dangerous broad. <laughs> um, look at this. This is inside artwork, people. Beautiful. The sexy. Um, Jessica Alba there. And um, what else we got? Take this out. I got more artwork. This is just jam-packed with artwork, people. Look at this. I love that. I love that. That's what made me fall in love with the steel book. I bought it online. Uh, I think it was like $18 I bought this for. It was quite a steal. And it comes with the Blu-ray 3D, so that's a plus. Um, yeah. And we get into this. This is a comic book collector set. Five movies. You got Punisher, The Crow, Sin City, Kick-Ass, and uh, ugh, The Spirit, which I don't watch. <laughs> um, this is a Canadian. That's why it has that lettering, that language there. Um, yeah, five classic films. And you got The Crow, which is one of my favorite movies. Of all time, I mean, of all time, in my top 10. Brandon Lee, amazing, haunting performance. Got Kick Ass, the first one, which I absolutely love. The Punisher, which I really, really like. 
with Thomas Jane and John Travolta. I can't wait for Punisher series on Netflix and the first in City, of course. Just great, great freaking film. And um, The Spirit, which is garbage. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Uh, I remember buying this off Amazon. Uh, great find. So yeah, I got five movies in there for one price. Not bad. Okay, now we got Spider-Man, the original trilogy here. Spider-Man 3, Spider-Man 2, and Spider-Man 1. Pretty cool with their slip covers. You already know I'm a big fan of this original trilogy. I actually rewatched Spider-Man 3 today, and it wasn't that bad. Not as I remembered. It was, it's like once you get past that cringy um, Peter Parker emo dance, <laughs> everything else is not that bad, honestly. You know, so, and of course, Spider-Man 2 is my favorite uh, masterpiece comic book film. And uh, Spider-Man 1, great. Moving on, gotta get faster here. Triple feature of V for Vandella, which is great, amazing film. Watchmen, it's a good film. And uh, Constantine, which is underrated. Can you read that Constantine was great, I think. Um, yeah. Got the slip cover here, you got the triple feature. You got your standard disc there. Watchmen and Constantine. Cool, cool, cool. Just gotta keep it flowing, gotta keep it moving. Don't want to take too long here. We got the Blade tri Trilogy here, uh, Blade 1 and 2, which are my favorites, and of course, you know, Blade Trinity, which is, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I found this in Walmart on Black Friday for like, I think it was like 8 bucks, but um, yeah, the Blade Trilogy right there, really like that one, Leslie Snipes, alright, now this is the DC Films, I mean DC well, some are DCEU, some are just regular DC films here. Let's we'll start with the DCEU, and we got Man of Steel, Blu-ray 3D. Um, yeah, I think it was pretty good. Um, somewhat mixed, but uh, I need to rewatch it again. I did like, uh, God, what's the actor's name? Michael Shannon, Azad. You know, I will find him. <laughs> he was great. Um, yeah. I just need to rewatch this one, but it's pretty good, I can say. Now, the best one, of course, Wonder Woman. You've already seen this lovely lenticular digibook. I absolutely love Wonder Woman. Love that edition. Right. And then we got, of course, <laughs> this controversial DC film, Batman vs. Superman. Dawn of Mixed Review. <laughs> Shit. This film, oh my god. I love the Wonder Woman in the background, of course. Gotta look at that. That's why I got this digibook. Yeah, I was fairly disappointed, but... Um, you know, it's just one of those things, like... If you're a Batman fan, doesn't mean I'm completely biased. Like, I think this movie's gonna be good no matter what. No, I can see the errors of its ways. And especially... God, uh, Jesse Eisenberg is Lex Luthor. Ugh. Every time I think about his performance, I cringe. It, it just, it's just so god-awful. <laughs> um, yeah, just they could have done this way better. This is just a sloppy, big mess. But still, um, it's nice to own. Um, I don't have Suicide Squad because that's the most horrendous one. <laughs> anyway, moving on, we got the original Batman with Michael Keaton. Hey, I'm Batman. <laughs> Uh, I got the Digibook here. Um, nice iconic shot with Keaton and Jack Nicholson, who portrayed the Joker very well here. Um, he portrayed like that Batman animated series Joker, which is pretty cool. I enjoyed his performance a lot. I just liked Heath Ledger's way better, of course. And there you go. It's that artwork and a little comic book strip there. It's pretty cool. Moving on, we got Batman Returns. Tim Burton's sequel, and um, I think I like this one better, Michael Keaton and Michelle Pfeiffer, and she was great as Catwoman, I got the back, nice steel book, but no inside artwork, which is terrible, <laughs> but yeah, Batman Returns, before I all went to Joel Shoe Cucumber, Shoe Marker, whatever his face is, and he messed it up, now, after that atrocity we have, the Dark Knight Trilogy, starting with Batman Begins, Christopher Nolan, 
brought back Batman in a big way. And yeah, I just love Batman Begins. It restored my faith into Batman since I'm a big Batman fan, as you know. And of course, Dark Knight. One of the all-time great movies. This was my number one favorite comic book film of a long time. The reigning champion, people would say. Until another comic book movie came along that surpassed it in every way. And you'll, you'll, see, a, you'll see this comic book film coming up real soon. But um, yeah, this is my number two. I love the joke. Alright, where were we? Sorry about the angle change. Well, continuing, yes, Dark Knight, it's great. Dark Knight, Joker, like I said, Heath Ledger's portrayal was just legendary. There's no other actor that can portray such filmy like Heath Ledger did. Just a masterpiece in every way. Dark Knight, this one, this one was one of my first Blu-rays actually, so um, yeah. It was a special place in my heart. And of course... Dark Knight Rises to finish off the trilogy. I don't care about the flaws in this one. They're minor in my opinion. I say it's still a great film. The Dark Knight Rises. I love this digibook. Pretty cool shot of Bane on the, the tumbler. And a shot of Batman. Alright. So. We're almost done people. Now we get into the X-Men universe, the Fox universe. Um, starting off with Deadpool, and this, I know it's different. <laughs> it's not really considered X-Men. I mean, he is part of it, but I'm just saying like in the X-Men universe. Um, but yeah, Deadpool, great movie. Ryan Reynolds was perfectly cast as him. And you got the red case, this is a Target exclusive. So pretty cool, pretty badass. Comes with these uh, postcards. <laughs> Just a funny as hell, action packed film. Really like this one. That pool. Now, this is my number one favorite comic book film of all time Logan. Logan surpassed every expectation. Everything when it comes to the comic book film genre, it just defined it. It went beyond it. I've never seen a movie. I had watched this film in the theaters like five to six times because it was that damn good. When I first watched this, I'll never forget it. Like <laughs> tears, everything. It was just it's a masterpiece. Um, Hugh Jackman's performance was amazing. Um, Patrick Stewart as Professor X. Daphne King as X-23. It just... I, I absolutely love this film to death. This is my number one. And I never thought a comic book film could surpass The Dark Knight. And this one did. This one did, in my opinion. It did. And it's still the best film of 2017 thus far. Um, we'll see if Blade Runner 2049 can top that. This movie, but... Oh my god, just, this movie is so beautiful. The ending always gets to me. It just struck such an emotional chord in me. I never thought any comic book film could, and this one did it. Just 10 out of 10. Anyway. And then, last but not least, we got all these awesome metal packs. I'm just going to lay out right there. Boom. And you got, I don't know if you can see it here. Got the Wolverine. Let's just go by one by one. Wolverine metal pack. It's a nice shot right there in the back. Beautiful shot in the, in the inside. Inside artwork is amazing, like I always say. So we got that. We got X Men Days of Future Past. My second favorite X Men film. Just love the interior artwork here. Very nice. Just a stellar cast. <laughs> and then you got X Men First Class. It kind of rebooted the franchise in a way. 
Um, you have James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender. Just he's just an amazing Magneto, Michael Fassbender, and then James McAvoy did such an excellent job as Professor Xavier, the young version, and of course you got the original X Men trilogy right here. And then you got X X Men One, X Men Two, and uh, X Men Three. Um, yeah. X-Men 2 is my third favorite X-Men, by the way. So, um, yeah, that's it, guys. That is my entire comic book movie collection here on Blu-ray. Thanks for watching. Um, leave some comments if you like. Uh, let me know if you watched any of these films in particular. Um, what are your favorite comic book films? Do you have a top five? I would like to hear it. What do you consider the number one best comic book film ever made? Um, I like to hear everyone's opinions on this. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Give this video a like. It always helps. Make sure you subscribe to your channel. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more um, videos like this uh, pertaining to my Blu-ray collection. And I'll catch you next time.